And amid growing unrest among presenters and crew on the show over the channel's handling of the Philip Schofield crisis, is it inevitable that the show will get the axe? What could the long-term damage to ITV's reputation be? And where does Holly Willoughby go from here? Is she forever tainted by this scandal? My next guest is perfectly qualified to answer all of these questions as someone who has worked in corporate governance and brand management, as well as having been a major star in daytime TV. Conservative MP and GB News presenter Esther McVeigh. Hi, Esther. Hello there, Mark. Uh, great to see you back on the box where you belong. Esther, is the axe inevitable now for this show? Well, I don't say anything's inevitable just yet, but I have to say this drip, drip, drip of information is disastrous. You were talking about reputation mm. there. You're talking about who is going to uh, feel the pain from what happens next. So what they have to do, um, because ITV now has become the story, this morning has become the story, they've got to get ahead of the curve, something they haven't done. So uh, what people are saying to me, there's no clarity there. What actually is the story? What do did Phil Schofield do wrong? Everybody keeps saying it was legal. Who did know whatever happened? And they need to get clarity, get ahead of the story and start explaining what goes on. Mm. Because what we're seeing at the moment is Take the fallout. And the fallout will be the viewing figures, which have dropped from about 1.3 million, the down at 700,000, came back a little bit. That might be sort of ghoulishness, wanting to know what's coming on. So you've had viewing figure fallout. You'll have shareholder fallout. You'll have advertisers uh, fallout. And obviously what you're seeing now is guests wondering, well, do they want to be associated with this? You're yeah. seeing contributors questioning things, saying toxic environments. So they will have to be uh, forensic. They're going to have to be dispassionate in a way and get to the bottom of what's gone on. And that they haven't done so far. Well, yes, let's not forget that Rupert Murdoch axed the news of the world, a very valuable brand because of phone hacking. Perhaps the Schofield story is not on the same scale, but it is damaging. Uh, Schofield clearly toast now, Esther. But what about Willoughby? Well, people will want to know who knew what, uh, who was covering up what, who turned a blind eye to what. Now, at the moment, um, Philip Schofield helped them all, hasn't he, by saying he was deceitful. He led them all astray. But the question will be, really, would a reasonable person have known what was going on and asked questions? And you've even heard our own GB News, Dan Wooden, saying he was asking questions back in 2019. Other mm. people were. And that's where this toxic environment, you mentioned something, and you seem to have been shuffled out. And what people need to remember, and obviously, yes, I was in brand uh, management and, and corporate governance, but I was in politics too. And what they do is, if there is a story, you'll be called in and they'll say, what did you know? What honestly did you know? We need to know about what's on your phone, because there's videos now, there's WhatsApps now, there's photographs now. What we don't want to see in a few months' time is more information coming out. So you have to level with us. I think that's maybe why Philip Schofield's management company left him, because he didn't level with the story maybe three years ago. And that's what ITV isn't doing. And the longer it goes on, this sort of cross-contamination, it won't stop just uh, at this m uh, morning. It will move across to the brand. And that is where you will see other people having to go and possibly uh, this morning going because they didn't nip it in the bud straight enough and they didn't get uh, to the facts uh, quick enough. And as you mentioned, news of the world, maybe mm. Murdoch was too quick there, but yeah. he didn't want that contamination to the rest of his empire. I think you're right. I think it was a hasty decision on his part, and one that perhaps he regrets. Uh, let me warn you, Esther, loaded question incoming. Do you believe Holly Willoughby oh. when she says she know, knew nothing and knows nothing of this situation? Oh, look, I think that's a tough one. I wouldn't want to call anybody because what you're saying there, if I don't believe her, I'm calling her a liar. Well, I'm not saying that at all. But the, I guess the legal question would be, was it reasonable not to have known? Maybe, could you have been more curious? But those aren't for me. That will be for her, her agency, ITV, to question her about. Now, she's off air for a period of time now, and I guess she'll be going through all that. And she'll probably have to herself question, well, what did I know? And I guess that's what uh, she's doing.
Yes, uh, well, look, a very diplomatic answer, uh, as expected, Esther. Uh, let Absolutely. me give you a statement from former This Morning star Ranj Singh, who spoke out today. He said, over time, I grew increasingly worried about things uh, behind the scenes and how people, including myself, were being treated. I didn't know the truth about what was going on with Philip, but I do know the issues with This Morning go far beyond him. I felt like because I whistle blew, I was managed out. But as history and experience have taught us, things like bullying and discrimination are very hard to prove, particularly in hindsight. And when the people in power control the narrative, as we've seen, no review or investigation is foolproof. Now, Esther, you have been an expert in brand management and brand recovery when there's a scandal going on. What about the damage to ITV long term? Well, I think what uh, Ryan said there is damaging, isn't it? Because he is saying there was a culture there above mm. and beyond uh, that he couldn't get to the bottom to and things were overlooked. Uh, and this and this is what I talked about, the drip drip. Other people are coming forward with other mm. stories and they've got to get ahead of that. And that will mean who did he go to who didn't provide that support? Why wasn't that support provided? And that could go right up uh, the ranks. So this is why I'm saying it's gone on now for uh, a considerably long period of time. You know what they say about politicians, if you're making the news for seven days, you've invariably gone. Uh, well, ITV need to look at this as well and uh, all of those responsible and what sort of environment have they got uh, for people to come forward, whistleblowers and others. Do people feel uh, confident there? Is there um, a proper protection uh, of uh, people who work there? And that's what they'll be looking at, really. I think they're missing you, you in the boardroom, in Esther. The yeah, I think they're missing your wisdom in that boardroom. I think there are grave concerns about the quality of leadership at the top, notwithstanding Schofield's behaviour. Now, here on GB News, you work with a Philip as well, don't you? But you got a good one. <laughs> yes, his name's surname's Davis, Philip Davis, <laughs> my husband. What can I tell you? I can only tell you good things about him. <laughs> but don't but you I have think... got incriminating evidence, WhatsApp messages and photos. I love well exactly right. I mean, you could take him down all the way. Uh, what I love about your show is that it's real. Uh, obviously, you have chemistry because you love the guy and he's your husband. But do you see a contrast now between the kind of shows that we try to do on GB News, where what you see is what you get? There's no BS. There's no smoke and mirrors versus a lot of establishment media programs like this morning where Holly and Phil went on air two weeks ago and pretended like nothing had happened. Well, you see, authenticity is key. Uh, mm. And I think the viewers can sniff that a mile off. Hence, you saw the viewing figures going down, down, down. It's like they could sense what was going on, the friction or what have you. Sometimes friction's good and people will watch for uh, a little bit longer. But no, what we do have, you know, is um, that authenticity and equally we say everything in a way is fair game we're happy to talk about everything and all sides uh, of an argument um and i think that is the future of tv because like i say you can be caught out in too many different ways can't you photos videos chat what other people knew which is sort of what's rumbling out here well, look, Esther, thank you so much for giving up your valuable time on a Sunday night to join us. Esther and Phil have a massive army of fans on their show every Friday and Saturday, 10 till 12 in the morning. Check it out. It's but brilliant Mark, stuff. Can, can I say one thing? We go to bed with you. We listen but, to you. <laughs> uh, is, it, is it a three-way relationship? <laughs> it is as you do the newspaper headlines, yes. <laughs> Listen, I'm happy to share a bed with both of you anytime. Well, that's a great privilege, a great honour. My thanks to the brilliant Esther McVeigh, Esther and Phil, back on Friday at 10. Thank you, Esther.